Hi, um, today I wanted to talk about homemaking and um, just because it's a big passion of mine, it's what I do and it's fun to share ideas with other homemakers. Um, I did want to start off with scripture as usual on my videos. Um, scripture talks about homemaking in a couple of places in Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 is um, the last chapter of the book of Proverbs and in the second half of the chapter um, it describes the excellent wife. It is not a realistic uh, woman. It is an ideal woman, which we could never be. But um, we want to strive to be like the woman described there because the woman described there is excellent and we want to be excellent. Um, we, we're human. There's no way we can do all the things she does. If you read it, it's almost uh, humorous. She's like, she must never sleep because she does everything under the sun it's amazing um but if you read it i'm sure that there'll be things that you can say hey i do that or i do that and i do that well and whoa i don't do that and i don't do that well um that just goes to show you know um there's room for improvement but even if we were exhausted trying uh, to be her we could never do it <laughs> um, and I said this in my other video it's just like Christianity we want to strive to be like Christ but he's perfect we will never be like Christ but we should continue to strive to be like Christ every single day because that is the picture that we have of perfect Christianity um, so anyway I'm gonna read a little scripture from Proverbs 31 um, in fact I'm, I'm just gonna paraphrase it what it, I, I picked out a few verses that speak specifically about homemaking. Um, it says that she provides food for her house. Um, it says that she works with willing hands. It says she's not afraid of her household when it snows, for her household when it snows. And it says she watches over the activities of her household. She is never idle. So basically, in a nutshell, that just means and explains that she looks well to the ways of her house. She is aware of what's happening in her house. In her house, she provides food for her house. She's willing to work hard for her home, um, and she's not scared of what may come because she knows that she has everything set for her home and for her family. She's taking care of her house. She's the house manager. And um, in Titus two. Um, it talks about what the older women are to teach the younger women of the church. And it starts off with love love your husband, love your children. But it also talks about to be homemakers. That the older women should teach the younger women to be ho how to be homemakers. Um, because it's not just something that's easy to do. I think a lot goes into it. Um, there are countless ways that we can um, describe a woman, every woman's life. Some women are married with no children. Some women are married with children but work part-time. Some women are married with children but work full-time. Some women are married with no children and work full-time or part-time or don't work. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. So obviously there's no um, specific exact things in scripture that say clean your bathroom once a week. Of course not. Homemaking is going to look different for every family, for every wife, uh, for every husband, uh, the husband's expectations may be different from family to family. A wife's personality and expectation may be different from family to family. I think that the general idea that scripture says is take care of your home, take care of your family, make sure that they're provided for. Um, serve them willingly. And of course, if you have a full-time job, it may be impossible to do all of that by yourself. Um, I do not have a job outside of the home. My full-time job is managing my home and taking care of my children. And believe me, it is a full-time job. I do not stop from the moment I wake up until bedtime. Um, and I, I hate saying this because I don't want to sound so proud and like I got it all together, but I think that I am very good at using my time well. I think that it is part of my personality. I don't like to just sit around when there are things to be done. I do rest after things are done. I like to be productive and I like to be organized and accomplish things with each day. And I do rest. I rest enough. Um, so I, um, I did 
want to just express that I am passionate about homemaking. I think that it is really sad what a low place it has in people's minds. Um, we are raising the future. <laughs> we're raising children at home. We're taking care of children. We're molding little people who are going to be the future of this world. And that is a very big responsibility and a huge calling and um, probably more important than any other job <laughs> because the future of the world is in stay-at-home mother's hands. It's in mother's hands. Ultimately, it's in God's hands, of course. I'm just trying to paint a picture of the value of this job. It's not just that eh, you stay at home and do nothing. Um, I wanted to say that it looks different with every family, of course, and I think season, seasonal, um, what season in life you're in also has to do a lot with it. Um, when I was married, had a full-time job, but didn't have any children, it was fairly easy to have, to maintain everything. I went to work at home, I, uh, I came home in the evenings, made dinner. Sometimes I left the dishes in the sink for the next day because I was tired and I wanted to be with my husband. Um, and then on the weekend, a couple of hours Saturday morning, clean everything and then be free. It's very different once the children come along. You, you don't get to sleep in anymore. You don't have hours of freedom. You really can't predict your schedule because just when you think you're gonna have an hour to yourself, one of the children wakes up early or whatever, you know? Um, very different with children. Um, so when you have children, uh, depending on their age, things change. If you have a newborn, you're not sleeping at night. You want to sleep during the day when they're asleep, so you may not have the time to clean or whatever. You know, then you have toddlers who are running around getting into everything. Um, I'm finally at a season where both of my children are sleeping about three hours in the middle of each day, and so now I finally feel after my second born. Um, that I'm finally in a place again where I'm able to maintain everything and have extra time for myself. Before I was barely maintaining everything and then gradually I was able to maintain everything but didn't have time for myself and now I'm past that. Now I do have time for myself and I can maintain everything. Um, the way I break things down in my home, I, um, I have as categories, I have groceries, I have laundry, I have folding and putting away laundry, I have ironing for my husband, I have um, cleaning um, the bathrooms, cleaning the kitchen, dusting, and cleaning the floors. So I have like eight categories and um, I do those one thing each day. I never try to do everything in one day because that's just not going to happen. Um, because I do try to do things while the children are sleeping, but I also like to rest. Um, what else? And it's really helpful, I think, to think of things like daily things are things like having the dishes clean, tidying the house and organizing things and cooking. Those are the things you do every single day. Then there's things that you do weekly, um, laundry, folding clothes, ironing, cleaning, um, groceries, um, and then there's things that I do even further apart, like shaving the dogs. <laughs> I have two dogs, so I groom them and bathe them. I don't do that every week. I do that more like once a month. And then there's some random errands that pop up, you know, um, in life. And that kind of throws you off sometimes. And you gotta do those and then get, catch back up, you know. Um, but those are irregular weeks and I think the priorities for me are usually clothes and food. As long as clothes and food are taken care of, everything else takes the back seat. And when I have time again, then I catch up. Um, third in line would be bathrooms. <laughs> um, and then I really try to take on things that my husband can't do while he's at work. Like if he has random little things that he wants information on or researched, I do that for him. Um, I'll do thank you notes for people that send us things, him or me. Um, I'll keep up with birthdays and send birthday cards. I'll keep up with um, the finances. I do the budgeting. Um, I have little charts and stuff like that that uh, I'll keep track of what we're spending and um, anything like that that my husband needs done that he can't do because he's at work. By the time he gets off of work, everything's closed, so I take care of those things during the day. Um, and I did want to say, I know I do everything in my home. As far as domestic things go, I really, I do, I do everything. But that is a choice. 
I don't want to be doing chores after my husband gets home from work. I want to be done with my day. So it's not that I'm not going to ask him for help and it's not that he's not willing to help. It's that I don't want to work once he's home. So I try to do everything that I have planned to do that day during my children's nap time and then hopefully I have a little time to rest before I have to start dinner and the kids wake up again and then by the time my husband's home dinner's ready all my chores for that day are accomplished and all that's left to do is clean up after dinner and play and um, that's just the way I like to um, function and run my home I don't want to be busy while he's home because I want the family to be together uninterrupted um, now there are some times where things roll over on, onto his day off and I'm like ah I didn't finish this or that can you help me and of course he helps me willingly there are families that split everything great there are families that the husband refuses to do anything fine for those families wives we have to lovingly serve our husbands and do not permit bitterness to enter because if that bitterness enters it can destroy your marriage and what you know is it worth it is it worth allowing your marriage or to have some um bitterness or resentment between you and your husband than to just fold the laundry you know it's not worth it i'll fold this laundry it's not going to kill my marriage you know um and something I'm very convicted about when I do feel lazy or like I just want to lay around and not do anything because um, even though I do like to be productive there are some days where I'm just tired and I don't want to do anything because my show is on or whatever I want to sit down and just look at watch Netflix for an hour but um, I think about my husband at work all day long he gets a 15 minute break in the morning a lunch break for 30 minutes and then another 15 minute break together that's an hour and I have three hour chunk in the middle of the day, you know? Um, I just think about him working and how he is entrusting me with a job to do at home. I wanna do it well and I wanna use my time well. Um, if I'm just sitting around, that creeps into my mind and I need to get up and do something because I want him to come home and see my wife is doing is using her time well my wife is using this blessing that i am at work all day giving her the opportunity to stay home manage this home and raise our children um and she's using the time well and um i want to work unto the lord I, I don't want to be idle i don't want to waste away i want to do things that have a, a benefit for others now and in the future instead of just wasting my time away um and not um doing anything important um and that's it really i mean if you have questions or comments please feel free to leave them i think this is a fairly easy topic because every family is so different um i think the foundational things we need to stick by are use your time wisely be productive do not be idle and um serve your family with love and joy work unto the lord and um make your home a place where your family is taken care of food clothes and environment a warm comfortable feeling a place where they can find refuge and um, those are the the major points that's going to look different in every family and that's okay because if we were if we were all the same how Ugh, how boring would that be? Um, so that's all I have to say. Thank you and have a great day.